What's up, guys? It's Josh back here from Inside Wrestling Truth. Uh, you know, last week I did the, uh, I said I was going to be doing some WrestleMania reviews. Uh, and tonight we're going to do WrestleMania 2. Um, this is from 1986. Uh, this event uh, was the first WrestleMania, and I think it's. Yeah, it was the first one, and it's the only one that uh, took place in three different locations. Uh, we would have part of the show in New York, part of the show in Chicago, and the end of the show in L.A. Uh, you know, we know that WrestleMania 1, uh, you know, really opened the doors for everything. Um, big shows, WWF, you know, and they would continue with the second edition of WrestleMania. Um, it was a, another good show, um, but let's get right on into the review of WrestleMania 2. Um, we have Vincent Mann in New York. He opens up with Susan St. James. Um, we had Ray Charles. Is this a man would say Ray Charles? Uh, sings America the Beautiful. Uh, and then we go to Mean Gene. Uh, who's in Chicago um, and then we go to you know Mean Gene's telling you the matches that are going to be at the Chicago part of Wrestlemania um, then we go to New York we have a Rowdy Piper promo uh, where he's talking about Mr. T um, first match on the night we have the magnificent Don Morocco with Mr. Fuji First, Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, who was a face by this time. If you remember in the first WrestleMania, he was a heel, and he kind of, uh, you know, Piper and uh, Orton left him. But uh, this match, uh, I believe it was a double countout, or Morocco might have won a countout. I can't really remember. I know they were both outside the ring. They never really told you. Uh, this was a, you know, a power, power match. Um, but I give it three stars out of five. It wasn't bad. Could have been definitely, definitely could have been better. I will say though. Um, then we have a Mr. T promo with Joe Frazier. Uh, Mr. T talking about Piper and um, Mr. T's midget is there, and uh, you know it's talking about how Piper shaved his cut his hair just like Mr. T. Uh, really silly promo for Mr. T, but at this time, I'll get in more on Mr. T here in a little bit. Uh, then we have the inner, we have the Intercontinental Title match. We have a Macho Man promo uh, where he's talking about George Animal Steel. Um, then we go to the match for the Intercontinental Title. We have Challenger George Animal Steel versus Intercontinental Champion Macho Man Randy Savage. Uh, this was a decent match. Um, you know, you had two different styles. You had Macho Man who could wrestle, and you had George Animal Steel, who was the first, one of the first true sports entertainers. Um, uh, he wasn't a great wrestler, but he could entertain. Uh, I am three stars out of five on this match. Uh, we've seen a little bit of everything in this match. Uh, George the Animal Steel, um, uh, would bite, you know, he would eat the turnbuckles, he would bite Savage's leg, uh, he would beat Savage up with a bouquet of flowers, <laughs> it was pretty funny, um, but Savage would pick up the win, uh, you know, he would use his, put his legs on the rope to get the one, two, three, um, after the match, George Animal still is going nuts, he's eating turnbuckles, trying to beat up referees, it was it was definitely entertaining, definitely an entertaining match. Um, then we're uh, back in Chicago, or uh, Mean Gene is doing interviews. Uh, we have Big John Stud and Bill Freilich, I believe is his name. Uh, you know, Big John Stud pops his football, and uh, they're talking about. P. John Studd, of course, is sticking up for the wrestlers, and Freddie Lick is still sticking up for the football players. Um, and then we take it back to New York. Vince is getting ready to announce the match. We have George Wells versus Jake the Snake Roberts. 
Um, this wasn't the best match in the world. Uh, the George Wells guy, I believe he was from Canada. I'm not real sure. Um, I only gave this match two and a half stars because um, it was a very short match. There were a few short matches on this card, by the way. Uh, it just it didn't have a lot a lot there. Uh, Jake the Snake would pick up the win with off a of DDT. He would. This is the match. I'm sure some of you old school fans remember. Or some of you newer school fans have seen. This is where uh, Jake the Snake puts the snake on George Wells, and George George Wells starts to like foam from the mouth type deal. Uh, if you got a weak stomach, you might not want to watch that. But I gave it two and a half stars. It was short, and it just really wasn't a very good match. Uh, then we go to Mr. T and Roddy Piper's history. We take it back from WrestleMania 1. Uh, we go to Saturday night's main event where they talk about it, the history there. Uh, just getting you ready for the boxing match later on in the evening. Um, we go back to, then we go to LA for the first time of the night. Um, we have Jesse the Body Ventura who is wearing some. Uh, he is wearing oh, just a weird, a wild outfit. I'll just put it like that. Check it out. Uh, he interviews Hogan. Hogan talks about how his ribs are broke and how he's going to beat Bundy up and how he's ready. And, uh, you know, and then we have uh, Joan Rivers. The late Joan Rivers is the guest ring announcer for the main event in New York. Um, uh, it's the boxing match between Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. T. You know, I've always been a big fan of Rowdy Piper. Mr. T was just a huge star during this time. You have to remember, you know, Mr. T was a huge star at this time. And bringing him in really did draw them money. But a boxing match... A live boxing match between these two guys is just something that should have never took place. Um, I just felt it was horrible. <clears throat> I give it two and a half stars. Uh, Mr. T would pick up the victory by disqualification in round four. Uh, this is Piper would pick him up and body slam him. Uh, there's some missed spots in this match. There's a match where, or there's a spot where uh, Mr. T bounces Piper off the ropes and gives him a hook. And he misses Piper by like that much, and Piper rolls out of the ring. Uh, this just was not very good. It wasn't put together very good. Uh, and it's sad because WWF spent a lot of time uh, for these putting these two together uh, for this match, and it just did not deliver. Uh, and that would be it from New York. Uh, then we would go to Chicago. Um, we have Mean Gene Okerlund. Um, he's talking about the matches on the night. Our first match would be Nikolai Volkov with Classy Freddie Blassie versus Corporal Kirshner. Um, I gave this match one star. It was absolutely pathetic. Um, it was like, well, it might have went three minutes. Uh, Kirshner would pick up the win. You know, he was supposed to be the next Sergeant Slaughter after Slaughter left in the early 80s, and it just didn't work out. And uh, it was a horrible match. There's really nothing else to talk about on that match. Um, we have Mean Gene. He talks about the uh, Battle Royal that's about to take place. Uh, we have two special referees in this match. Both former NFL players from the Chicago Bears, the great Dick Buckus, and from the Dallas Cowboys, Two Tall Jones. Uh, here are the participants in this battle royal. Uh, Where it's mixed with NFL players and pro wrestlers. Some of these NFL players you might not know. Uh, but here are the participants in this thing. We have Jimbo Cur Covert, Pedro Morales, Tony Atlas. Ted Arch Archidi, Archie, something like that. Sorry if I said it wrong. I don't know who he is. Harvey Martin, 
uh, Dan Spivey, Hillbilly Jim, King Tonga, who was Haku, uh, Iron Sheik, Ernie Holmes from Steelers, uh, The Killer Bees, Big John Studd, Bill Fralick, Hart Foundation, Russ Francis, Bruno San Martino, William Perry, Andre the Giant. Those were the 20 guys in this. Um, this was uh, this was pretty entertaining. Um, Andre the Giant would win, of course. Uh, the last four guys in the ring were uh, Andre the Giant. See, it was Andre the Giant, the Hart Foundation, and it was a foot. Uh, Russ Francis, I believe, was the other guy. He was like a, a wrestler in college, too, or some of some sort. Uh, but Andre will win the Battle Royal. Um, you know, the year before, he beat John Studd, and this year he will win the Battle Royal, and we all know what happens in WrestleMania 3. Uh, but it was pretty entertaining. I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad they had it uh, on this card. Um, we, have, we go back to New York. For a Rowdy Piper interview, uh, talking about after the boxing match, uh, this was Piper. I mean, he really went deep into his promos talking about Mr. T. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, and then we go back to Chicago. Mean Gene interviews uh, a couple guys after the Battle Royal, you know, get their thoughts on the Battle Royal. Of course, some of the NFL players felt they were cheated. Um, then we go uh, to the tag team title match uh, this was a very good match we had the tag team champions with Johnny Valiant Brutus Beefcake and Greg Valentine versus the British Bulldogs who were led to the ring by Ozzy Osbourne uh, this match was great. I gave it three and a half stars. Uh, they would go back and forth. The ending spot in this match is uh, Davy Boy Smith would uh, give Valentine an Irish whip and he would hit heads with Dynamite Kid, knock Dynamite Kid on the floor, and then fall back. And Bulldog would get the pin one, two, three, and they would win the tag belts. A very good wrestling match. Very good, very physical match. And always. If you go back and watch Brutus Beefcake's matches, when he was in tag matches, when he was working with Greg Valentine, he was a pretty good wrestler. Uh, go back and watch some of them. It's just like when he was on his own, he really couldn't carry it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, then we go to L.A. We have, they're talking about the uh, matches that are going to be in L.A. We have Jesse Ventura, uh, Lord Alfred Hayes, and Elvira. Um... Uh, then we have Hercules versus Ricky Steamboat. Uh, this was a pretty good match as well. Gave it three stars out of five. Uh, Steamboat would pick up the win uh, on a flying body press it once again like he did at rest of the first WrestleMania when he took on the Executioner. Um, and gave it three stars. We had Adorable Adrian Adonis with Jimmy Hart versus Uncle Elmer. I gave this match two stars. It was absolutely horrible. Uh, Adrian Adonis would pick up the win, but just nothing there. It was boring. Adrian Adonis uh, would spend his time falling out of the ring most of the match. And Uncle Elmer uh, was just a horrible wrestler. I'm sorry. Just a horrible match. Then we go back. We have Lord Alfred Hayes. Uh, he interviews Hogan. Uh, we go back to the ring again. We have Terry and Hoss Funk with Jimmy Hart versus Tito Santana and JYD. This was another sleeper match on the card. Um, they would go back and forth for. I mean, this was a really good match. Um, not a whole lot to talk about. Just a very entertaining match. Uh, you know, I, I enjoy watching it. The Funks, uh, the Funks, you know, they got the win. Sorry about all the noise in the background, guys. The Funks would pick up the win, and uh, we would go as the guys, the room crew would set up 
uh, you know, the old blue steel cage that the WWF used from all the time. Um, when you go to Hogan and King Kong Bundy, we would learn their history of the build up for their feud. Um, it would show Hulk Hogan working out with Hillbilly Jim and a doctor. Um, then we would get a promo from Bobby Heenan and King Kong Bundy. Um, then we would go to the ring. The guest announcer was Tommy Lasorda. Uh, in the main event, we have King Kong Bundy versus WWE Champion Hulk Hogan. Um, if you don't know the history between this match, I'll go ahead and give you a little few things. Uh, this match was built up because King Kong Bundy splashed on Hogan's ribs. Uh, and Hogan had bad ribs, apparently, and they didn't think he was going to be able to be in this match. Um, I thought, you know, Hulk Hogan isn't known for carrying guys in matches. But uh, I felt like in this match, he really carried King Kong Bundy. Uh, you know, I've said this on several occasions that I felt that King Kong Bundy was very overrated. He was just big. Um, you know, his comments I've heard on shoot videos where he talks about Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels being the two most overrated champion, worst champions in WWF history. And then, like, this dude was just big for nothing, like, can you tell me some of the wrestling moves he did besides a big splash in the avalanche? Hogan carried him in this match, but it was still a good match. It's three and a half stars. Uh, it's a main event. Hogan would win. Um, there's a spot in the match where, where Bundy hits his head on the cage, and you can see him playing as Day Bladen, and Heenan tries to act like he's all, acting like he's all right just to cover it up so nobody can see it. Funny stuff. I give it three and a half stars. Um... You know, I gave WrestleMania one, eight and a half stars. I give this one eight. Um, the things I didn't like about this one, there were s several matches that were very quick. Um, three different locations. I didn't like that. I thought I had too much going on. It was too much confusion for everybody. We go here, we go there, we go here. Uh, but I get, I understand what they were trying to do. Uh, trying to do something new. Um, but it's still a very, very classic event. Uh, good stuff. Um, but I'll be back next week for WrestleMania 3, guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions on what you think about WrestleMania 2. Uh, this was just my opinions on it. Uh, just a quick review. Uh, and I'll see you guys next week for WrestleMania 3. Peace.